Sorry, everyone, about that. That was uh, my fault. I'm here with Vic. I totally did a boomer move and uh, screwed up the stream. I like doubled it, and then <laughs> it was uh, it was my bad. I'm still getting used to this new setup that that we're using. So uh, it, it happens. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, Got to get used to it. I just don't want the branding from Streamyard. So trying to do it this way. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, just seemed to work out better. So. Oh man, this week we're talking to Vic here about his stuff and the stuff he's made. Yeah. He's made two things that he's released very very quickly. Uh Waste Runners and Simple Modernity, which is OSR well, Simple Modernity is OSR uh modern firearm combat rules. And then Waste yep. Runners is using Cowpunchers rules. Yep. On uh oh, I'm backwards. My <laughs> screen's backwards. I've got to figure out how to not mirror that. But uh, using using cowpunchers rules for uh post-apocalyptic European, probably terrible stalker shadow Chernobyl style stuff. So oh yeah, pretty much. It's it's basically a direct rip off, but I didn't really say that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool though. I like stalker. That was a good game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Good. Okay. Everyone's in the chat yeah. now. They're they're saying. We got people here now. <laughs> Good. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you always tell me, like, oh, oh, John, you work so fast. But I, I honestly think that you probably work faster than me. I think. You know? um, if I put my mind up to it, sure. Like, I have periods of crunch. Uh, where you know I just don't sleep for two days and finish it off. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of in the same boat where I have like these flashes of, of uh, inspiration where I'll I'll make mm -hmm. something and then it'll um it, it it I'll I'll like work on it for like hours or a few days or like a week straight and I'll make like a ton of progress yeah. and then I'm just bone dry creatively speaking for like a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I get that too. I I tend to kind of piecemeal it like, you know, I'll I'll do like a couple hours a day or like maybe even like, you know, half an hour and just kind of like write something. And then eventually, I just kind of set a deadline for myself, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna like finish this by like Monday." And then mm. I just don't sleep for like a whole weekend. <laughs> yeah. So the simple modernity. Let's talk about that one first. Um, okay. That one is uh, OSR, which is probably more yep. is really um, appealing to a lot of people that watch the channel and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, this is like your first real OSR product too, because you've been doing five E yeah. stuff before this. So, yep, tell me, tell everyone about making uh, OSR stuff in comparison to five E. Harder, difficult, just different. Um, it it was easier in some ways, like you know, doing like the the gun stats, uh, like coming up with the rules for like auto fire, like all that stuff was a little bit easier because there's just less. Uh, just like less to worry about you don't really have to worry about saving throws as much like you know all that stuff uh but i found the classes a lot harder just because they're simpler so it, it was harder for me to like make them flavorful but at the same time keep them like you know kind of like always are simple mm -hmm. it was like a, it was like a bit of a balancing act with fifth edition you can just go all out and make them as flavorful as you want pretty much but yeah <laughs> well yeah because like the 5e player demands um yeah those explicit options of what they their character yeah. can and can't do whereas you know we've talked about it a lot osrs uh here are some very simple tools 
go buck wild in gameplay to solve the problem yeah. in front of you. So it's just a different mindset. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Toe Stubber says both of you work fast as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently we do. So. <laughs> Uh, I wish I worked faster, though, and I wish I had more time. I don't have enough time in the day to do the things. Uh, yeah, I have no life, so it helps a lot. Daniel Daniel K says he picked up uh, Modernity today, so you got to see Yeah, I saw that. that. Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> it's actually my best seller so far. <laughs> well, so. you know, OSR, OSR is a very... Yeah. Uh, people see it, and they're like, ooh, what's that? I'm like that. I'll see an yep. OSR product, and I'm like, I don't know what it is. I probably don't need it, but I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, bodes well for the future. Uh, I want to do more OSR stuff. Uh, this, this was kind of like a test one to see how it would be received and, you know, kind of like um, familiarize myself with that whole thing. And eventually I want to do like a like a big project and like actually kickstarter it and all that junk. So mm -hmm. what uh, for everyone out there watching, what because I think I know, but what specific games, o OSR games, were you looking at as a basis for? For, uh, for the most part, old school essentials and like uh, basic fantasy. Those are like the two rule books that I like reference the most. Those are both really good. I, I, obviously, people know I'm a basic fantasy EFRPG fan. I have a whole video series on it. Yeah, <laughs> explaining how that game's <laughs> played and how I play it. Um, yeah. Let's see, what does GM Steel, Steelhaven stay here? Stalker, the game where you can experience the pain of having your favorite tricked out AK break on you, with three monsters bearing down on your head. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and there's mods that make it even like more brutal. <laughs> um, do you want to do you want to share a little bit and, and talk about? Your... Oh, sure. I can screen share it if you want. Sure. Yeah, with your PDF. And it's it's funny too because like I've I'm I was working on mine. I have OSR rules uh, that I'm doing for. Um, I'll get rid of my face here. I have some OSR rules that I'm doing for uh, specifically Invisible College through Well of Erd, uh, mm -hmm. who published Invis Invisible College. But yeah, mine is I think very different flavor wise from yours and we'll get into that i guess so yeah um i i did kind of copy one of your ideas a little i changed it a little but i i like one of my optional rules for damage is kind of based on your death saving throw one because mm -hmm. i liked it and you know it gives some people that want the more gritty like deadly guns uh, you know something to pick from yeah so uh, yeah i i added death saves to mine so like if you get shot you have to make a death saving throw and failure yeah. of five or more means you're unconscious and bleeding out. And you're going to bleed out. Like, if the weapon deals a D6, you're bleeding out a D6, like, every round. So Yeah. That's, but that mine's not an optional rule. That's just, like, how it is. You get yep. shot and you're done. <laughs> so, uh, um, Yeah, my standard rule is just, you know, they just do damage like any other weapon. And yeah. then I've got, like, a couple of optional rules. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look at it because uh, I want people yep. to check out your thing. I like the, I like the simple... People like that with the, with the OSR, like the simple layout and, and yeah, Yeah, that's what I uh, went for. I kind of went with the, like, the whole color scheme, like, you know, uh, red, white, and black. Yeah, I like it. So oh. 3D6 or 4D6? Nice. Uh, yeah, it depends on if you want the more cinematic feel or not. Yeah, the silhouettes look cool. I like that. Uh... Yep, um, you will 3d6 times 100 for your money instead of the normal 10, you know, because modern currency, you know, inflation and all that. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> uh, I saw a meme today. It was like, was it in our... No, it wasn't on the... Maybe I put it on the Gilded server. I shared it in a couple of different places where um, uh, it's like my parents when they were 30 and it's they're, they're looking at a house like this looks like a wonderful yeah, winter, yeah, yeah. winter home that we could we could winter in I hope it fits our jet skis and, and all of our stuff and our car and it's like me in my 30s and it just is like a, a carton of milk and a loaf of bread and he's like I'm never going to financially recover from this purchase yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah but I anyways. saw that one <laughs> so classes uh, yep. you got soldier would this be equivalent to like a fighter yeah, uh, as, if you look at the level progression, it exactly. says that it basically progresses like a fighter in an OSR of your choice. So, uh, you know, uh, the same um, health increase, uh, the same like uh, XP uh, 
uh, requirement, all that stuff. Yeah, so I like this because you uh, and I we were talking about this on the the Gilded server as you were working on this because you were asking, and it's funny because it's like the laziest option, but it's probably the option yeah. that people like the most because then they can use it mm -hmm. in OSC, they can use it in um, BFRPG, they can use it in Sword and Source uh, Sword and Wizardry, they could use it in White Box, like um, yep, that genericness to it can can make it work anywhere. So that's cool. And yeah, if I could, I would have based it like on like old school essentials or something. But I didn't feel like going to the top trouble to figure out, you know, the the the, the nitty gritty about the licensing and all that stuff. Just for like a little side project for this. That's just for the future. Mm -hmm. So I made this one generic, so you know you can use it with pretty much any OSR. Uh, I got a question here from Sean Cherry. He says, "Hey Vic, what uh, what is the larger project you're working on regarding simple modernity?" Um, um, well, I basically just want to take this and expand on it and just give even more classes, just more firearms, more equipment, uh, probably some like actual like more detailed rules for vehicles because I kind of kept that vague in this. Um, maybe even add like some rules for like cyberpunk stuff, like if you want to add that to your game, like all that stuff. Just basically make, take this and just make it like, you know, five times bigger. Cool. And actually get like you know good art for it instead of like the commercial free stuff I, <laughs> hey, I used. That, it looks cool with a silhouette like that. I yeah, think it's yeah, simple. I like it. <laughs> I mean, you called yeah. it simple modernity. You got a simple, clean yeah. layout. I I like it. I can look at this and I read it and I know, uh, I know what this guy does. I'm not can. Yeah, it's not this flurry of. Yeah, I I uh, named it simple modernity kind of as a pun on basic fantasy. So mm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so cool. So he he has uh, you got the prime requisite hit dice, uh, armor. Yep. Yeah, and that's Use the any armor, any weapons. Sorry. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about the OSR too. Is like so for like a white box. Um, you know that's that's based on OD and D, so that uses mm -hmm. D sixes only. But it, th this is the beauty of the OSR is that you can substitute that one D eight hit dice. Yeah. And and use the the hit dice from white box if that's your game yep. choice so that's what i like uh, yeah there was actually another one of the games that i looked at for inspiration was uh, operation white box the oh. world war ii white box one i referenced that one too for mine it has some, yeah i liked its uh auto fire rules yeah uh, i think i changed it a little bit but it was a mm -hmm. good uh skeletal frame for me to base my ideas off of so yeah i think i mostly based my sniper class on the sniper class from that mm. Yeah, I mean, if someone already did guns, and uh, you yeah, know, might as well look at what they did. So heavy gunner, nice. Yep, that's uh, the machine gunner. You know, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, all that stuff. And I like that you give uh, it, it. It's not necessarily OSR, but no one says you can't do it. OSR is like the third, the gaining new abilities at various levels and stuff yeah. like that. I I think that's cool. That's definitely like a yeah. a modern touch to gaming that I I think is cool. Yeah, it it was mostly just to make to make actual like you know each class stand out, and you know make them a bit more flavorful. It's a bit harder to make them generic in a modern setting, in my opinion. Yeah, like you know, with fantasy, you've got the fighter, you've got the ranger, you've got the rogue, and like all that stuff. With with uh, your modern stuff, you've got a specific type of soldier that does this, and then another specific type of soldier that does that. So, mm. <laughs> but they're both soldiers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So this guy's more, yeah, heavy like LMGs, uh, yeah, grenade launchers. Stuff. And uh, like yeah, then at tenth level, I I maxed it out at tenth level because I thought that was like a good midpoint. Because <clears throat> old school essential usually goes to like level fourteen. I noticed, but mm -hmm. then like uh, stuff like basic fantasy goes to like level twenty. So I kind of took like a midpoint, well, and then you know, any anything beyond that can be extrapolated. Yeah, and well, you know, uh, World War II uh, Operation White Box goes to level ten or eight, I think. It's pretty low because um, there's a yeah, point, like level three, I think. Um, well, I think some maybe go to level three, but because they say explicitly in Operation White Box, like this is meant for one shots, which I don't. That's one part about it where I'm like, I like games where I I can run a long term campaign mm -hmm. with yeah, that, same. which I think you could with Operation White Box, but. Um, I don't know if that's the best marketing ploy to sell it as that. My game's a I mean, one-shot. you could do, thing. like, a whole D-Day type thing. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, the Battle of Stalingrad or whatever. That would be pretty dope as a campaign. <laughs> yeah. Go through the days. Do one one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone has to dig their own foxholes in real life or else your character is going to... Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get dysentery. <laughs> Cool. So th these aren't all uh, military classes here, because I see below here you have the crook. Yeah, yeah. This is more uh, like based on like the John Woo, like the Chow Yun Fat, like you know those '80s movies, like Better Tomorrow, uh, uh, like The Killer, um, Hard Boiled, like all that, all that stuff. Hmm. So you know they're uh, criminals that you know use like dual pistols or like dual Uzis and stuff like that. It looks like you based him roughly on the thief a little bit. Yeah, they got like most. I think. Yeah, they have all the thief skills. But then they just get, like, some extra uh, combat options. And then at uh, ninth level, they can, like, start their own, you know, crew, basically. Become, like, a crime lord. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because you got to have your named level... Uh, yeah. Your, your named level perks or options or rewards yep. or whatever, so... It's kind of based on, like, you know, from the, uh, from the actual old-school stuff, where it's, like, at ninth level, you can, like, have its castle. Yeah. So <laughs> stronghold. What was uh what was the soldier or the regular soldiers? Um they form? can commanding officer. Oh, okay. They can basically get their own squad. Okay. Which can be two D six other soldiers, heavy gunners, or snipers of first level. Okay. That's cool. That makes sense, because they're more military crews. You're not gonna get like a Yeah. A, a fiefdom of, of thieves. <laughs> yep. And the heavy gunner actually um instead of getting like some dudes like most of them, he actually improves himself. Hmm. So at 10th level, his the hit dice increases to a d10 uh, retroactively applied, so his health will go up massively. Uh, his strength increases to 18, if not already there, and you gain plus 2 to all saving throws and plus 2 to your AC. So that's why he's called One Man Army. Uh, that's cool. Some people might be like, that's OP, but like if you get to level 10, you're already... God. Yeah, plus so, guns are already OP in my opinion. Like you're gonna get like sniped at from like a thousand feet by like a fifty cal. I mean that doesn't really happen in like you know uh, old school essentials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it guns. I and I know I know some people probably look at this uh, and are like oh, guns in D and D like it irks them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. I know I know that it irks them, but uh, you know that's. I, I think it can work. I think yeah. I, I think I found a way to make guns hyper realistic, and I think uh, you found a way to make guns super, um, like you said, John, like John Woo style. You yeah, can, you can More get cinematic. really yeah. cinematic eighties uh, mm -hmm. action movie style. Yeah, but like I told somebody recently, I'm sure when you know uh, Guy Gax uh, made like you know D and D based on chainmail, all the hardcore chainmail nerds were like. What the fuck is this dude putting elves in a like awesome yeah. game? Dwarves so, are dumb. You know, <laughs> yeah. So th 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 you know, there's always going to be somebody who's trying something new and gets like mocked by the old guard. So whatever. Yeah. yeah, whatever. They're not making stuff. Yep. So this is like your computer hacker class here. It looks like. Uh yeah, it's kind of general computer hacker, like just you know intelligence guys. They they also get some skills with explosives. Okay. And I like folded a couple things into one class here. What's his hit dice? Uh, one d four. Okay, so he's so kind of pretty squishy. He's kind of like the magic user then. Yeah. Like, like they actually do get magic if you look at the progression. Oh, okay. This includes access to spells. Oh, okay. that's cool. Because like, if you want to run like a modern fantasy thing, which I know you're a big yeah. fan of, you have that. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't, you just ignore that. So. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and that's why I gave them like some you know actual abilities beyond that, because I think like the core magic user, it's like oh you get magic and that's about it. Yeah. So yeah, they can hack. Um, with uh, DM Blackwall uh, came up with like a pretty simple system just for you know to simulate hacking. Okay. I want to blow that up a little so people can read it because I kind of like it. Specialists can hack computer systems. The way this is handled is by giving said systems a security level, normally between 1 and 6. Some may go up to 8. And by giving the specialists a chance to crack these security levels, that improves as they level up. The specialist simply rolls 1d6 and must roll equal or higher than the security level they are attempting to hack. At level 3, the specialist gains plus 1 to, his roll, to this roll. At level 6, the specialist gains plus 2. 
to this roll, and at level 9, the specialist may roll the d6 twice and use the highest result. Hacking a system takes 10 minutes. Yeah, that's cool. That's simple. Yep. It's abstract. Yep. Uh, I'm So I know some people might be like, I, I need to ha see, have more detail than that, but I personally don't like that. That's when you role play it. <laughs> yeah, you could role play it, but then you know you don't want to yeah. bore everyone else around the table as the yeah. As the hacker. Oh, I've been there, believe me. <laughs> as the hacker, I played Shadow One. <laughs> yeah, everyone's just like, is this over yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've literally sat there for like two, three hours watching other players like hack stuff. So, <laughs> can we get this going again? So, yeah, cool. This also allows you to basically assign like a security level to like a system on the fly. So you know, if you're trying to break into like an office building it'll probably have a different security level than you know you're trying to break into area 51 or whatever yeah well, yeah 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 or the pentagon <laughs> well, that's cool i like that okay you do give them armor which i i think when guns are involved because yeah. normally like because you're basing them off the magic user but normally the magic user does not get armor but yeah uh when bullets are flying you got to give them armor <laughs> Yeah, plus anyone can put on a Kefla vest. Like I don't care like how magical you are. Yeah, there's no real, there's no real special training. Once you start getting like maybe level four plates and it gets a little yeah. heavier, you got full battle. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. You. you know that might be hard for, for an egghead to do. But yeah, just like yeah. regular Kevlar Kevlar vest, that's not a big deal. Well, I also have a system where different levels of weapon do, uh, like they interact with armor differently. Mm. So. Like, a Kefta vest isn't going to protect you much against, like, you know, a heavy machine gun. You're actually oh, going to take an AC penalty to that. Uh, Poncho Goblin says, Cyberpunk 2020 hacking is a nightmare. I, I've oh, heard, yeah, I bet. I've heard this. I have 2020, and uh, Brendan, who's on the server, was talking about possibly running um, for our in-person group uh, a Cyberpunk 2020 game. And I, I, I've, I'm excited for that, but I, I've heard a lot of groups just steer clear of having, um, what is it, Netrunners? Because they're just like, nobody wants to deal with that. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. And then, um, yeah, ninth level, they get the ability Tiger Team. They basically attract a 1d6 group of other hackers, and they can, you know, just run as a crew of hackers, I guess. Uh, if you ever seen the movie Sneakers with Robert Redford, that was kind of like my inspiration. No, that's cool. You do a little, do a little uh, uh, white hat hacking team or black yeah. hat. Who cares? You know. Yeah, you can kind of be anonymous <laughs> or whatever. And there we go to the sniper. Also, I'm not sure if it's just on my end or if it's like also on the stream, but you're kind of cutting in and out sometimes. Uh. It might be on, hold on a second, let me, sorry everyone, I can boost my volume a little bit. How's that? Uh, yeah, that's better. Okay. All right, back to your stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> The sniper, like a little bit smaller, so hopefully that's still readable. I'm not sure. Uh, you could zoom in a little bit more, maybe. It's okay if you got to scroll. And if if there's anything you don't want to show that you want to keep hidden, so people like are incentivized to buy your thing, just like skip past it. You know, <laughs> you, oh. you don't have to show everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be pretty surprised if there's somebody just like sitting there, like screenshotting every page and <laughs> making a compilation. It's like, ah, oh, now I've got it for free. Oh, I bet you I probably mean, feel kind of honored. To them. You probably yeah. feel kind of honored at that point. Like, oh, people are pirating yeah. my stuff. That's how I know I made it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I can't wait for my stuff to like appear on like 4chan or like, oh, if, I wish the Trove was still around so my stuff could appear on that. Like, I don't get that Swihander dude that got it shut down. Like, it's an uh... honor, dude, to get pirated. <laughs> Uh, it's like the Metallica of TTRPGs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, I like this. Yep. So he's 1d6 hit points. Okay. So this yep. is a class that there's no real like fantasy OSR comparison that you could you could draw from. What? So you said you were looking at 
white box was there any other like mm-hmm. fantasy resources you were looking at or um no not really not for the classes I just kind of made, made up my own stuff i mean um the progression uh they progressed like an elf because that to me seemed like the closest to like you know a sniper mm. and then uh, if available they may also progress as rangers because the old school uh essentials advanced as rangers mm-hmm and if a GM wish uh, wishes, they may also allow them spells like an elf. So, you know, for, again for that more uh, urban fantasy flavor. Cool. Kevlar vest, flak jacket, plate carrier, ballistic suit. Cool. Oh, I just noticed an issue here. Oh, I didn't. I didn't bold the class description, and oh well, something to fix later. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of uh, PDF. You can yep. update it, and then everyone gets notified on Drive Through RPG yep. that you updated it. So. That's what I get for like working on this on like no sleep for two days. <laughs> and yeah, ninth level they get to take a spotter with them, so they get like you know one extra dude, which could be a sniper or a soldier of third level, um, and they basically can help you uh, shoot better. And holy smokes, man! I'm looking at the page count here. This thing's 41 pages. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a that's a lot like of work. A, Little, uh, yeah, for something I cranked out in like what two and a half weeks. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. <laughs> Lord Mateus says, "Dude, I just saved three fifty by going to the basic expert stream." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what's up, DM James? Glad you're here. Yep. And Poncho Goblin says, "Are paladins just internet white knights?" Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> depends. <laughs> I think paladins are cooler. Yeah, I don't see a paladin necessarily simping. Like, yeah. Although I could, I could see someone doing a modern day s- setting where like a paladin is a simp for like some ethot or something like that. I don't know. I <laughs> the just fedora plus one fedora. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I now I just gave someone a terrible idea. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, what does James still even say here? Get through some of these comments here. Cyberpunk 2020 hackers, the netrunners, are better handled as a separate thing. Divide the gunners and the runners into two different groups. Much easier to handle. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Because then the gunners are sitting there watching them as uh, they're hacking. They're like, this is cool. <laughs> the way I want to do, uh, you know, this is completely off topic, well, kind of, but the way I want to do hackers in my fifth edition thing is that um, cyberspace is actually like, like almost like a different plane. Like, mm. you know, like you have like the plane, like the elemental plane of whatever. And you can actually take other people like into it. So you can like, you and your crew can like astral project into this plane. And like uh, hacking will actually be like, oh, I'm going to go into this Dada dungeon and like fight like some, you know, security elementals and try to get this, get this cryptocurrency. So mm. it, it's, it, it can easily be like a whole team effort rather than just like one dude like rolling dice. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool idea. Almost like, I don't know, that sounds kind of Matrix-y a little bit. Yeah. Like like, like the Matrix, we're going to plug into the Matrix a bit or something. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I have a survivalist. Let's see here. So these dudes level as clerics, because why not? I'm getting, just from that silhouette, a slight Indiana Jones vibe. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit, kind of like Indiana Jones, like a like a kind of like a crazy prepper guy. Okay. I I basically just had to take a picture, and that was the closest I could find. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it would happen. <laughs> yeah. So um, they they have a chance to be surprised less. Uh, they can make a rations last twice as long. Okay. So cool. instead of like one ration a day, it's like one ration per two days, basically. Not surprised as easily. Yeah. Uh, reloader. That's cool. So you can uh, reload your own ammo. That's a neat idea. Yeah, which is pretty useful, I think, for certain uh, certain games. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I like having classes like this where you know you could you could use this to run like a post-apocalyptic kind of game. Yeah, and then, definitely. You know, someone would really want to be this class. Uh, or just these would be good skills to have, like if you're running a, I don't know, you're, you're running a game where the characters are like dealing with uh, bad dudes and 
the heart of some backwater third world country and yeah know. pretty much <laughs> yeah you're in south africa uh, south america somewhere or whatever yeah <laughs> at ninth level you get a compound <laughs> you get, yeah. your, own, <laughs> get your, own, your own waco <laughs> yep <laughs> And yeah, that's the means for a party of up to 12 people to survive indefinitely. And it actually improves your uh, reloader and canning abilities when you're uh, at the compound. I like that. I so like... you can basically get three times the yield. I like that. That's something I'm not as good at, is is taking these special abilities in my games and linking them together like that. I need to get better yeah. at that sort of thing. Um. I think starting with 5th edition was actually very useful for that, because that's fifth, what all 5th edition is about. Yeah. Like, at 10th level, this previous ability becomes better, so it kind of trained me to think like that. Yeah, that's cool. Contract killers next, I see. So you got your assassin. Yeah, uh, which... yeah this one's actually kind of OP, maybe, but I don't know. I like the flavor of it, so whatever. People can just fucking deal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the beauty of uh, role-playing games is that game masters, dungeon masters, referees, they can tell their players, you can be that class, but I'm changing this. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't well, get you don't uh, get that ability, or I'm nerfing that ability. Yeah. So. yeah, pretty much. Well, also, they only get 1d4 hit dice, so they, they're pretty squishy. So they're kind of more like a glass cannon. Yeah. So if you... That's how you balance stuff. Yep. And this is probably an easier one to do because there is an assassin class in AD&D. And I yeah, think it's basically... Uh, I think there's an assassin oops, class in OSE as well. Uh, yeah, that's what I based it on, the OSE advanced one. And I basically just took that and gave them the ability to use like guns to assassinate. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, Raven Wolfgar is in the chat. How's it going, man? Uh... Just people greeting each hey, other. Hey, Raven. Basic expert, keep your rifle by your side intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I, I sleep with my AR by my bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything the goes... best part about that song is that it like started off as like kind of like mocking that whole thing, and like it's, it, everyone just embraced it. Yeah, it's like no, stop! I'm supposed to be making fun of you, and everyone's like, "This is great." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like this, but unironically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so contract killers can only wear light to medium armor, close range weapons, so machine guns, shotguns, pistols. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit of like a John Wick type. Yeah, I think he has a lot of cool stuff, but I think the D4 is a good... Balancer, yeah. Yeah, because like uh, he's good at killing people he's not he, he's good at assassinating and assassination is not the same thing as, as a straight up fight so. yeah you have to like be in position to actually do it so you know might, you might get one or two dudes but then maybe everyone will be aware of you and yeah yeah well, that's cool everyone's gonna be agent 47 with that class <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> So yeah, they, they basically, at different levels, their uh, assassination abilities improves. So, you know, uh, if they don't get them this, the first time with with uh, double tap, you know, they can put, do another shot into them. And then with most of the big drill, they can do like a third shot. Hmm. Knife in the dark. Uh, when you use your hide in shadows, you may now attack with the melee we weapons as if an enemy pass... Sorry. You may yeah. now attack with melee weapons if an enemy passes you within range, including the ability to assassinate them if you can attack from behind. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Very, very. I get very Asian forty seven vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Hiding bodies was, in weird uh... places and. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's uh, pretty much the. Uh... Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I had to like put that stuff on the second page. That's cool. Uh, so basically, at ninth level, they uh, they basically can send other assassins to like do jobs for them, and they'll take like you know a cut of the pay. That's cool. Reminds me, I think in uh, really thinking about AD and D, you could do that with assassin hirelings, and mm -hmm. there was always like fun stuff. Like 
the assassin double crosses you and joins the, the side you're supposed to have him like infiltrating or whatever just like fun little stuff like that where the yeah where the player is like what the hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the, i think this stuff is nice because it gives like players something to like retire to as well it's like well i'm done adventuring now i'm just gonna like you know hire other people to do stuff for me and just rake in the cash or or you could just hand this character out at the start of the game and you know do patron play yeah yeah good <laughs> boys all way <laughs> uh, oh, i had to add the actual bit little bit of art here to you know fill out the page <laughs> yeah that's cool got a medic yeah you need a healer yep progresses like a cleric oh they also makes sense yep they get the access to spells if if, if you want uh, so, so, okay basic basic kind of military kind of medic yeah cpr field surgeon what's mash at ninth level you can now set up a field hospital or a private clinic in a location of your choice Track 26 medics of third level to help staff this hospital resting in this hospital triples your, the hp a character regains each day that makes sense this hospital may even be a source of income for you as you provide medical care for the local populace ownership of this hospital additionally provides you with 50 percent discount on any medical items it's cool i like that yep. and uh yeah cpr is basically kind of like a, a free uh, resurrection but it has all the penalties of like you know doing resurrection Raven Wolfgar says medics are usually called corpsmen, and I've heard that. But I think the layman probably doesn't. Not every layman knows yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So. That's cool. I like that. Oh, and then we get to the to the more uh, modern fantasy style stuff. Psychonaut. Yeah, the more esoteric. <laughs> you want to join my cult on my farm? <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is more kind of like the um the um, the the Stranger Things type stuff, like the eleven oh. type stuff. Just just a silhouette makes me think of like uh, hippie stuff, like yeah, like definitely. flavorful stuff, like your character perpetually smells like patchouli oil. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is that they take like psychedelic drugs and like use that to fuel their like abilities. So that's cool though. Veteran of mm -hmm. the Psychic Wars, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's I, uh, the reference to that song. <laughs> I like I like uh, having the option to do that, because I, I, would, I would totally play in a modern fantasy game. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I definitely want to use this to run one. We just need to find you know the time to get some people together. Yeah. Raven Wolfgar says, Psychonaut, now we're talking. Uh, yep. Lord Matthias says, I well, want to... technically said Patronaut. I'm not sure the patron or this is some guy that just <laughs> oh. gets paid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna assume that's the type. He uses money. He uses money for his magic. Uh, Lord Mateus says I like the psychonaut class. Well, so do I, but you know I wrote it, so <laughs> a little biased. But hey, someone yeah. who didn't write it likes it, so that's that's a good thing. <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, so one thing they get is high tolerance, so they can take a dose of psychedelic drugs without using uh suffering the usual ill effects because i added the drugs as like an actual item you can buy but if you take them there's like a chance that uh the monster you're attacking is not actually real so basically you're just uh, flipping balls and it's like oh i see an orc and like no there's no orc <laughs> i like that that's cool yeah astral projection that's cool all right I've been toying with that in my Aztec game. Still can't really make yeah. it work the way I want it to. But it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, but you can be detected by other Psychonauts. So if there's like an enemy Psychonaut. Yeah, that's cool. I, I wanted to do something like that because I wanted to use it as like a form of like magical spying almost. Like out of body experience yep. to go spy on someone. But then... Like all of a sudden you do you're 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 somewhere and like, oh my gosh, there's someone else here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can you can use the mind for that too. That's basically what it says here. You can spy. But if you're also if you're tripping balls, uh, if you took too many drugs, there's also a chance that there's actual like 
astral monsters like with you that can attack you, like mm. that can attack your spirit. So there's like you know there's risks involved. It's cool. See you later, Poncho. Uh, later, Poncho. When the wife needs help, you gotta go. Um, <laughs> dude, there's like a bunch of orcs, man. I'm gonna throw a fireball. <laughs> Lord Mateus yeah. says that. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, there's no works. <laughs> wheelman. I know there's a wheelman class in... Um, op, uh, Operation White. Yep. Yeah, Operation, Oper White, Box, yep. Operation White Box. It's a, that's a useful skill. A uh, useful class. Yeah. For, for That's one thing I hadn't thought about until I read Operation White Box because I'm not really good mm -hmm. at the whole modern combat th thing in that regard. Uh, yeah, for like a for the entirety of a game, um, like yeah, you you want a guy that can uh, be your getaway driver. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, can also repair vehicles. He can steal vehicles. So you have Guan Tevado. You have a two in six chance to successfully break into and hot wire vehicles that don't belong with you. Do not belong to you. I fucking can't talk because I'm Dutch. Uh, and then. <laughs> at, at six level, it improves, so they get to go on in 60 seconds, uh, which increases their chance to four and six. At, ni at ninth level, you may own a fleet of vehicles. This fleet consists of 1d6 land vehicles, 1d6 air vehicles, 1d6 water vehicles. This includes the spaces to keep them, such as in a garage and a small private airport and a marina in the suitable locations of your choice. These locations have full facilities to maintain these vehicles, including staff. Additionally, due to your connections, you can you get a 25% discount when purchasing any additional services. I, if I was this class and I reached named level, I would start a chop shop and just steal people's cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you can definitely do that. And you probably make some mad cash doing that. So, <laughs> Or you could, you know, have, like, your own private airport and do some, like, Air America type stuff. Just be, like, transporting, like, cocaine for the cartels. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely all, all sorts of stuff you can do with this. Oh, and then because you're you're a good driver, your your speed with and handling with the vehicle vehicle looks like it increases as you level up. That's cool. Yep. Yep. By level ten, you can get fifty percent more speed out of a vehicle, which with certain vehicles is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably unrealistically so, but whatever. And yeah, now we're getting to the firearms. Okay, so I like so you went kind of a more generic route with like yeah. this is a revolver. All revolvers do this. All pistols do this. Yep. That yep. that makes sense. Um, for my thing for Invisible College with Well of Erd, I went with specific weapons just because I'm yeah. I'm a I'm an ammo sexual, and uh, well, I did that with waste wonders as well. So you did what? I I went with specific weapons for waste wonders as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess it's it's what what are you trying to do? What are you going for? Yeah, because um, you yeah. could easily take like you 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 know like I want to. Well, you have you would you would just do it this way, like I guess like a, a Desert Eagle would do a D eight, you know. Yep. Yeah, Desert yeah. Eagle would be a heavy pistol. Yeah. Uh, a heavy revolver would be like you know a four fifty four Kazool or whatever. Yeah. A normal a pistol is just like you know a Beretta, a sick uh, Browning high power, like whatever really. Yeah, your your assault rifle would be like what like an AR, or an yeah, AK and then maybe. a battle rifle is like a fell. Okay, They're like a three. Basically, probably. the difference, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, difference between between five five six and seven six two. Mm. And then heavy rifle is anything from like you know an elephant rifle to like you know a Barrett fifty cal. So did you did you make all this up yourself for these damages, or did you look at something, or...? I, I basically made them up myself. Well, I looked at my 5th edition book. They actually have similar damages. But yeah. oh, okay. But uh, they, my 5th edition book actually uses also the generic, uh, generic weapons. Oh, okay. Because these, these are actually pretty close. You're, in, you're kind of in between like what I did and then what Pundit did mm -hmm. in Invisible College. Because yeah. Pundit's just like... All pistols do this damage, and that's what I didn't like about. I know mm -hmm. it's not the focus, um, but I wanted like a little more variance because playing a Templar in his game really appealed to me. 
And so, like, yeah. like a pistol has to do more, like, like a, a, a five a five seven, for instance, an FN five seven is is not going to mm-hmm. hit the same as like a, a, a thirty two. You know, like yeah, definitely. <laughs> like they can't. To me, it just irked me. Like, why are they dealing the same? Why would those deal the same damage? I don't like this. Yeah, <laughs> but. Well, that's uh, that's why I have like the light pistol. That would be like uh, you know, like a thirty-two ACP, like you said, like a Walter PPK or whatever. Oh. Then you've got like a light revolver, and to kind of like make up for the fact that they, they reload slower and they have like less ammo capacity, I gave them like a plus one to damage. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's cool. So, do, do, does a revolver reload kind of like a crossbow almost, where it takes like a turn or two to reload it? Uh, yeah, if you look at the the qualities here, reload. So a pistol is reload one, so it takes like one round, and then a revolver, revolver takes like two rounds. Oh, okay. I think I gave the crook basically uh, faster reloads. I'm not sure. I think I did. I think for mine, I just gave, I just made reload like a free action. Cause, yeah. Because that there's two different ways you could go. Like you could go kind of like the way you did it, but then like part of me was kind of like reloading is. Like if you're practicing, it's not that hard. Um, like mm-hmm. you, you can get pretty fast at it to where like y- in the middle of shooting, you could reload and then start shooting again really quickly. So yeah, it, I guess it just depends on which way you want to go. Yeah, I just gamified it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then you know it gives the it gives you the ability to add like faster reloads as like class uh, abilities or like feats if you're like using like fifth edition and stuff. So you can pad out the game a little bit more by, you know, giving them, like, special reloading abilities. Yeah. But yeah, this list isn't, like, at all comprehensive. Like, my 5th edition one actually is, like, probably, like, twice this. Okay. But, you know, it's called Simple Modernity. I just wanted to give, like, some basic stuff just to, like, test it out. So I kind of kept it, uh, you know, just all, all the main options, basically. All the stuff you would expect. No, I, you know, honestly, this is plenty right here because as, yeah. as a game master, you could look at this and be like, uh, um, maybe you got like a tricked out pistol that's like all aftermarket par- parts and it's like a, it's mm-hmm. like a tricked out Glock 19, you know, you want to give to yeah. a player and you could easily modify the damage and give it like a 1d6 plus one or plus two or whatever it yep. is, you know, to, to reflect that specialness of it, you know? Yeah, Definitely. Uh, so these all the descriptions. Zoom out a little bit more. It's a bit. Oh, um, I also gave like average ammo capacity, so just to kind of reflect that you know you're dealing with like different models, because mm-hmm. you know a uh, a uh, a 1911 doesn't have the same capacity as like you know Glock 19. So oh yeah, seven compared to 15 plus or yeah 15 plus one is yeah <laughs> yeah there's a big difference there. <laughs> uh. Well, and, you know, I'll, I'll say this for people out there that maybe want specifics. Uh, I What I use when I reference firearms for my games is I think the website is like militaryarms.com or something like that. Yeah. And you get like this whole repository of weapons, what they look like, um, effective ranges, and what a- kind of ammo they take. Because some firearms, like some some handguns, some rifles can take different cartridges so that's a good resource if you want to kind of flesh stuff like this out i used it for cow punchers like i just googled like 18 weapons of the of the 1870s you know and like all these rifles and and handguns and stuff came up so it's super useful just throwing it out there for other people that want to that maybe get this and want maybe some specifics or something like that yeah I was looking at one of those sites once, and I was looking at like the the, the real life sniper rifle I own. So I, I like looked up that model on that site, <laughs> and they actually used my pictures because that <laughs> rifle is so rare. They actually just took my pictures that I posted on the forum and used that for their like encyclopedia, you know, gun encyclopedia site. <laughs> That's it made cool. me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. All right. So now we get to uh, nitty gritty. Yeah, so this is the outer rules, full outer rules. Auto fire attacks can be ruled in three ways. Burst, full auto, and suppressive. Three options work as follows. Burst, you attack a single enemy with two, minus two to hit. Your range is reduced by one third, rounded down. 
successful, you increase the weapon's normal damage by one die step. Example 1d6 becomes 1d8. These attacks consume five rounds of ammunition. See, I'm going to have to go back and look at my... Because I was struggling to find a way of making like full auto yeah. work in mine. And so because I was doing specific weapons, like I went and looked at like how fast does a firearm shoot? Like how fast, how many rounds per minute does uh, like an AK shoot, you know? Yeah. And then so how, so that's how many it can shoot in a minute. And then like how many, you know, doing the math, how many can it shoot in six seconds? Uh, like a segment, yeah. which is what most uh, D&D games kind of say like your turn is it's about six seconds. And so then mm-hmm. I, I reflected that as, like, that's how much you can just, like, hose someone. That's how many rounds are expended when you hose someone on full auto. But I don't know if I necessarily like that. I don't know. I have to think about it. It can, be, it can maybe get a little bit crunchy, and you'll be like, oh, what, what weapon am I using? What's the uh, fire rate? Like, yeah. what, what's the ammo consumption? So that's why I kind of just kept it generic. Plus, uh, I, I've seen systems where it's like, oh, you do burst fire, and you have to roll for, like, every shot. And then every shot has like, you know, an additional like penalty. So you're like rolling like six dice and you have to like, you know, it's like, okay, this one's minus one, this one's minus two, this one's minus three. And it gets very crunchy. So I just was like, yeah, burst damage just does an extra die of damage. Fine. Yeah, see, uh, my my thing was uh, my my gun autism fighting with game design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh... Now I got you. I, I I I'm not good at balancing those two things. I think that's what's that's what's been the struggle for me. Covert firearms of this quality have a two and six chance to pass. Is that unnoticed during the pat down? Uh, no, to pass notice, so they oh, don't okay. get noticed if uh, yeah. Explosives mounted. Okay. I mean, I think you cover everything that you need for for this to work. Um, yeah. see what I did too in mine is I, I combined like full auto and suppressive like if you aren't taking full auto fire you're being suppressed I just kind of combined yeah. those two together um, but I could see separate the, I could see reasons for separating them out as well like I don't know it's kind of in a game it's kind of fun to just mag dump into someone so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> You're super suppressed now, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you, could, a... you could technically just combine them. That's like nothing cool. says that if you do this, it's just like oh yeah, they still don't take damage. I mean, you can just easily just house rule that they you know do. Uh, reloads. So how did you handle sniping here? Farms with a sniper quality can be aimed for additional accuracy, usually due to being outfitted with telescopic sights and bipods, or just because they are so powerful. Should they so wish, characters can spend their entire round aiming a sniper weapon, gaining a plus one to hit on the next round while firing within the weapon's listed ranges. Additionally, they gain the ability to shoot beyond the range at minus two to hit, uh, up to twice the weapon's max range. Example, sniper firearm, with a max range of 750 feet, can be fired up to 1500 feet with a at minus two to hit when aimed the previous round. But at half the damage, characters must re-aim their firearm before every long range shot like this. A GM may decide that being successful, that being successfully hit that round while a character is aiming disrupts the aiming process. Okay, I like that. That makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. And the half damage is kind of to reflect that, you know, bullets lose, you know, they lose energy. As uh, the you know, do you, farther they fly, so do you have rules for spotters for like a sniper? Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, with the actual sniper class. Okay, go back up. I think I missed it. Uh, as um, compound, there we go. Okay, get, get a little NPC spotter. Yeah, they basically give you uh, advantage. <laughs> um, would you, if you were running the game, would you allow someone to just like another player to be a spotter before ninth level, if if they like... um, 
Yeah, probably. Probably only after like another sniper. Oh yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Because then you know you're you're probably specifically trained for that. Uh, like in sniper training, they also tend to you know train you to be a spotter, and they kind of like rotate. So. Yeah, I would I would definitely allow that. So if there's like two snipers and they want to like lay next to each other and like the the other one gives the other one bonuses instead of like shooting himself, I I, I would definitely allow that. Uh, Mike Dimart asks, is or will there be a print version? Um, I, I I'd I'd be open to it. I would just need to figure out how to like set it up or you know pay Keo or my friend Keo to do it. Probably <laughs> it's most likely, like figure out all the you know the bleeds and all that shit and. Uh, Inscribus. You could probably do. Did you make this Inscribus? Yeah. You could probably just. You could probably upload this to Lulu, and mm -hmm. see like how it looks because it gives you a little preview. That's what I did oh, with yeah. Cowpunchers. Like it was Lulu was ex much easier to set up than Drive Through RPG. So you could get print copies on Lulu if you wanted. I don't. I don't think the margin is as good for you. No. Offer for sellers on Lulu, but you could do it. You could get it out there for that if you wanted to. It'd be quick, quick, yeah. easy, and dirty. So, and their, their print yeah, quality is something to look into. Their, their print quality is pretty good. So, uh, Lord, see you later, Lord Mateus. Glad you could stop by a little bit for a little bit. He's got to work in the morning, so he sells yep. cool product. Oh, you already responded. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I typed at him. Yeah. All right. Attachments. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I finished this thing and I was like, just like chilling, like, you know, happy that I finished. And then an hour later, it just hit me. It's like, oh shit, I completely forgot to add attachments. So I had to like go in and like shoehorn them, <laughs> like, like right in there. So they, they might not be as detailed as I wanted them to be, but I think they work. Well, I, you know, in mine, I kind of went generic like this too. Cause, yeah. like, on, you got a Trijicon or some other sort of like red dot site. Like, they're, yeah, f game wise, they're all going to function relatively the same. Um, yep. Any, anything to try and make like your red dot site more effective or like the battery dies or something like that is going to get yeah. into the realm of being too crunchy, anyways. So, yeah, I didn't bother with batteries for this one. Or you can be a cheapo like me and get your hollow son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept the rules for uh, suppressors also kind of generic because stealth is a little bit uh, iffy and you know always are. Yeah, there's no real like walls forward, so it's like it's up to the up to the GM how they use uh, you know how they uh, how they deal with suppressed guns. Yeah, it's kind of a rulings, not rules sort of thing. Sometimes yeah. I would use like a character's one in six chance of spotting something kind of hidden or like a finding a secret door. To, to yeah. s and maybe I'll increase increase the range to like a, a two in six or something. You know, um, if yeah. they if they notice something, uh, maybe like for a suppressed fire, you could make it like two and six or three and six for for mm -hmm. someone out there. Like if it's depending on the situation, but. Well, with the the sniper class, so they can conceal themselves, like you know, wear a ghillie suit, lay somewhere, and they can start shooting. But mm. every shot raises the chance of discovery by a certain amount. Mm. And if there's like an enemy sniper that's like you know, looking for them, that for for that sniper, it increases it even more. But with uh, suppressors, that lowers that chance again. Or I think it's like instead of going up every shot, it goes up every two shots if you use a suppressor. I see. Oh, I figured that was like a nice, simple way to handle that. Okay, you got armor types, armor piercing, hollow point. Uh, 50 BMG. <laughs> cool. Yeah, this is just to give like a, a uh, average of like what the bones would cost and like how, mo how much they would weigh. Man, I wish I could get a... Well... Uh... I'm trying to think like what is ammo priced at right now? Could I get 25 rounds or 20, 20 50 rounds for 25 bucks? <laughs> Cuz <'Cause> ammo's still <laughs> still Oh yeah, I I, I, <laughs> I probably can't even get that here, so <laughs> trying to decide if I'm envious of these prices or not. 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantasy. That's this is why this is why we play yep. these games. <laughs> In my game, I can I could buy ammo for less than a dollar a round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a dream. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> All right, and then you got explanations of like what uh, yeah. different ammos do. Well, I've got Vorpal wounds because, you know, you got to have Vorpal wounds. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you got some... Because uh, like Dragon's Breath is like a real thing yeah. uh, for shotguns. But then, yeah, you got Silver, which you theoretically could make. But if you're hi hunting Lycanthropes, you probably want that or Undead. And yep. then Magic Bullets and... Progressively more magical as you go down. That's cool. Yep. And explosives. Uh, one question I had too. Did you rename saves? Or I forget how, because we were talking about it on the Gilded server about saving throws. I kind of just say like, you do a save, and then it's kind of up to the GM to use the save that makes most sense in, in that system. Yeah, because uh, old school essentials does it differently than like uh, you know, some other system, but it's just like a gen like uh, like Castle and Crusades just has like you know, generic saves, I think. Yeah, and then old school essentials is like safe versus spell, yeah. And then you know, you got like swords and wizardry where you just have like one save score, and then your character yeah. class gets like bonuses towards certain things, so yeah, um... definitely. Cool. I kind of just say, like, you know, characters make a safe, and then, you know, you, fig you fucking figure it out. <laughs> Likely Arrow says, uh, wait, are Dragon's Breath rounds made uh, from real Dragon's Breath in this? <laughs> I mean, it could be if you wanted them to be. You could homebrew They're just it. miniature dragons, like, just <laughs> stuffed into a shotgun shell. <laughs> Explosives. Cool. Yeah, there's, uh... Like grenades and like you know C four like all that stuff. I'm I'm looking at all the tables you made in Scribus and I'm like I feel your pain. Oh, actually, I made these in Word and then I just took them. I I basically just took them as images. Oh, okay. Then that was much easier because man, making tables yeah. in Scribus sucks. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I I did that for uh, um, Waste Wonders and that probably took like half of the fucking like time I put in. It was awful. All right, cool. Um, I want to have time to get to Waste Runners too. Uh, yeah. Anything? I don't want to like rush through this, but um, so you got detonators, okay? I still can't believe yep. you wrote forty-one pages. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's look at armor. I'm interested in how you did armor. Uh, let's see. Armor, armor. Let's see. I just got equipment just real quick. There's all the stuff you can buy as far as equipment goes. Uh, armor. Vehicles. Oh, yeah. Well, let's look at it. You said, you said you went kind of generic with vehicles, but I'm curious. Uh, vehicles yeah. As well. You just gave them like, a, oh, like crew size, weight, cost. Yep. Then I made up a, uh, I made this up, vehicle armor rating. Okay. So certain weapons, uh, if you go, yeah. So weapons have like a penetration rating. So like a light pistol has a penetration of zero, uh, a heavy rifle. So like a 50 cal has a penetration rating of like three. Mm. So they do different stuff to like vehicles. Cause you know, a, a light pistol is probably not going to damage a car much. A 50 cal definitely will damage a car. Yeah, it's designed to take out engine blocks and stuff. Yeah. So. And then there's all the descriptions of the different vehicle types. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of leaving things kind of generic just because... Uh, like, holes and rules. I'm a big fan of that. I know some people don't like that, but yeah, I know you said you went kind of light on that, but it leaves enough room for uh, stuff to kind of just... It takes a, a more experienced GM, but the ability yeah. to just make stuff up on the fly. It's easier. One thing I had to do. Oh, so we good? Well, I say it's just easier that way, in my opinion, to me. Yeah. Well, one thing I had to do was kind of like uh, uh, keep the the speeds kind of like um, like figure the shit out because like a car, like technically in in ten seconds, like a car that goes like one hundred and forty miles an hour can move like two thousand feet or some shit. 
So like in like a single round, that would put it outside of like you know the uh, the distance of any gun. Yeah. So I kind of had to like keep that generic, like like basically told the GM like, yeah, you should probably give like the players at least like one round to shoot at you know a car that's like fleeing or like driving away from them. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because you kind of want it to be exciting and and yeah. cinematic. So. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the armor here. Okay. So they increase your basic AC, but then they have an armored level which will protect them against uh, uh, certain types of weapons. I see there for your your armor yeah. level rules. Okay. Yeah, which is a uh, a table a bit lower down, I believe. You went a little more elegant than I did. I I definitely went more crunchy with what I did, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. I'm just lazy, so. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I find a way to the, to the solution, and there is an easier way. Um, yeah. Because I I stuck with like this is level four like ceramic plate armor, and it will protect against these specific rounds and against these specific yeah. kinds of rounds. It's going to get like an AC bonus of plus four, or plus two, or something like that. Yeah, know? yeah. So uh, a little more crunchy, well, but I I basically did the same thing, but it's like this weapon has a certain rating, and then that rating does a certain thing against certain armor ratings. Hmm. So instead of like listing like different calibers, I just like yeah, this gun has like a rating of two, and that does this shit to like you know armor of rating one. So yeah, so, so you as found you can a, see here a more simple solution than I did. I, again, see, I let my gun hmm. autism get in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually based this on the system that I came up for wa- uh, for waste runners that I showed you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As you can see, if you're using a penetration rating three uh, weapon, uh, which is like you know, like again like a Barrett fifty cal, you have a minus three AC if you're wearing no armor. You have a minus two uh, AC if you're wearing level one armor, so like a Kevlar vest. Minus one if you're wearing level two, so like a you know like a Kevlar suit or whatever. And then uh, if you're wearing like level three armor, so like you know power armor basically like your ac is like normal mm. uh, that's cool definitely it was more simple and elegant for like yeah <laughs> I, I man I'm, I'm realizing i wrote my thing for uh other gun nuts like me that happen to play ttrpgs <laughs> yeah oh, well i mean i'm a gun nut too like massively but yeah but you know I, what i mean like like yeah. the, that yeah. that minutia <laughs> of of like I, I didn't abstract enough things out, I think. Yeah. That I, that I could have. So that's cool. Right shield. The description cool. here. Yep. Ballistic shield. Oh, oh, ballistic shield. I remember in Counter Strike one point six. Is that when they put in the first ballistic shield and just run around with a pistol and shoot? Oh people? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that in Call of Duty too, and people hate it. <laughs> Those guys with the op like that bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kill me with this. And then, you know, the exosuit, which I've also put in, uh, in um, Waste Runners, kind of goes more into the realm of sci-fi. But I figure, you know, near future is still modern, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're giving, like, ideas to, you know, you're giving little teases and tidbits. I could see why you'd want yeah. to maybe um, use this as, like, a teaser for, hey, someday I want to make this... Yeah, yeah. Like bigger, because I could put yep. more of this kind of stuff in it. So, yeah, give like rules for like sci fi and cyberpunk and stuff. Uh, and then, see, I'll probably. It's like the, the optional rules over here. So, the rules for going prone, uh, cover, how currency works. So, basically, like one gold is like the equivalent of $10. Okay. Which works for everything, so that works for weight, that works for, uh, you know, if you use, uh, you know, gold as XP. So you could totally do, like, you know, uh, a game where the characters are, like, raiding some, like, drug lords, like, mansion, and that is, like, the dungeon crawl, and then you, like, make off, like, a duffel bag full of money, and that's, like, your XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've got the optional rules for, uh, for, uh, Multi attacks, and then multi, yeah, multi attack method. Okay, yeah, because we were talking about it, and like, man, the, this is the hard part too, is because guns are yeah. already overpowered, and mm-hmm. 
pulling a trigger multiple times isn't that hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> so like that, I I mean, so this is why I get why some people um don't like guns in D anD D because they are very OP. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> You just have to go into it expecting what it is, what it is. It's not for everyone. So. Yeah. Well, that's why I also made like this the uh, the optional rules. So you know the standard rules are they might not be as realistic, but they're a little bit more fair. Like mm -hmm. you're not gonna get riddled by like a Beretta, like you know at level one and just die horribly. <laughs> but you know for for people like you and uh, Crossface and like you know all the crazy OSR bastards, like you know you can easily just take this and be like, oh yeah, you know a soldier at level uh, nine can fucking shoot like four times. <laughs> Uh, Raven asks, no electronic capture shield. I'm not sure what he means by that. What is uh, electronic capture shield? Yeah, GM Stillhaven says, uh, 50 BMG rounds are about 5 to $8 a bullet. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got the safe versus death rule here. Okay. Which uh, probably looks familiar to you. Yeah, this is my, this is my rule. Totally. What I'm doing yeah. is under the OGL2, so it can be used by anyone else, so... <laughs> I think I slightly tweaked it. I think, I think I tweaked the bleeding numbers. Yeah, because, uh, let's see. I think a normal failed save over means the shot. So you have to... If they failed, they're I safe. think you said that it's the weapons die. For me, it's like the damage that they took, so it actually could be more. Ooh, you're mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because, yeah, because I was gonna, I was making that like downed character, like, all right, it's your turn, roll for how much you bleed out right now. That was my yeah. thinking, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind, of, kind of keeping them in the game a little bit still. They're doing something, even though they're like dying, yeah. But and it kind of, I, I, I liked the idea of um, they're still in the game, they're dying, they get to do something, and it's like everyone watching them die as they bleed, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then exploding deaths. Yeah, yeah, which actually can be combined, as I mentioned here. Yeah, so, I mean, that makes sense. You get hit with something and, like, look, um, even a two two three, coming out of, like, a 16-inch barrel is traveling at, like, almost 3,000 feet per second. And yeah. it's, a, it's a teeny tiny round with a lot of velocity. It's going to fragment inside of a soft target and expand and get all over the place and make a complete mess yep. inside. That's the whole point. That's how it, that's how it kills. So, yeah. Um, that makes sense. You know, you have. Like, well, I mean, this... it could def like deflect off your collarbone and just go like right up your neck, and then like you know, yeah, take half your brain out. I mean, that happens. Like you know, they deflect inside your body like all the time. So, yeah, you gotta. That happens. You get shot. It yep. makes like a f soccer ball sized uh, expanded expansion wound inside of your your torso. So you're done. Okay, so Raven clarify it here uh electronic capture shields are a clear concave at the forward face and have two handles with a button you use it in a charge attack pin the unfortunate jerk off to the wall or or a quarter and hit the button i mean you could probably i mean it doesn't like you have it but you could probably add something like that pretty easily that's something for the expanded version at least <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean i definitely didn't put like all all, all of my ideas in there you know i want to keep some uh you know some cards uh uh, what's the, what's the term? <laughs> I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Let's just say that. He says it's a shield and stun gun all in one, and it really, really works. Uh, ride the light in, babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it got rules for jamming. It, okay. Yep. So I think, I think what I did, because at first I had guns jamming like way too much. Like it was too mm -hmm. high of a chance for guns to jam, so then I just had it like a, your gun jams on a on a critical failure, like a one. Um, that there's a jam, and then I, I think what I did, I have to look back at what I did. Um, it you have to do a second roll after that to, to see if yeah. you cl clear the jam or like how bad the jam actually is or what the malfunction actually is. So. Yeah, mine's similar. So you roll in, if you roll in that one, you have to like roll like a d6, and then there's like the chance of the gun jamming. So mm. if you're lucky, it's just like you know a normal miss, like a critical miss. If you're unlucky, you have to clear your gun afterwards. Mm. I got a I got a double feed. Damn it! 
<laughs> this, and it's funny too because like half of the problems with gems and firearms come from the magazine not necessarily oh yeah definitely the gun itself you use cheap mags you're gonna get jams all the time well, i went shooting earlier with my dad and uh, his uh, 22 pistol kept jamming and um uh... It, it turned out he was using like the wrong ammo. He was using the ammo that I use for my little cow bean. And that ammo is like, it's like really oily. Like mm. they cover it in some kind of like oil. And like it, just, it was just like gunking up his pistol basically. Well, and 22 is like notoriously. Oh yeah, definitely. Unreliable. It's, I mean, it's a great little round for like, you, you know, your Ruger 10 22 and you're going to go shoot some squirrels mm. and fry them up later. But uh, it, yeah. It's 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 a yep. it's a finicky round sometimes. Yep, I've got this uh, optional rule for armor damage. Uh, Twenty-eight millimeter. What's up? He says something I always look at within with an RPG ease of GMing, making NPC slash creature stat block simple and easy easy to read. Yes, easy combat that you can add onto if you want more flair in combat yeah i agree with that too i'm i feel like i'm still kind of learning how um how to write for like a game it's a totally different way of writing yeah you're thinking on a lot of different levels uh see npcs here this is okay. done basic ass npcs dog hitman police officer swat officer soldier sniper commando anti-material sniper anti-tank soldier and heavy gunner Okay, because I mean it is OSR, so the, that yeah. that's another awesome thing is that you could look at your OSC rulebook and like look for a monster in there, just use its, yep. its stat block as is, and just reskin it for your players as something else that you know. Yeah, and if you want to like you know give the orc a gun and you know just take away his sword and just replace it with a pistol or whatever. Yeah. And uh, see, um, yeah, I've got like little like sample plots oh that's good idea really. <laughs> i'm here for uh for toast stubber if he's in the chat i have no idea Not for <laughs> them. he hates this one <laughs> the party is a military unit sent to track down another team that's gone missing while on patrol deep in the mountainous terrain <laughs> i know where you're going out with this yeah <laughs> finally upon tracking into a remote plateau the party finds evidence of something gone terribly wrong weapons and equipment are found scattered all over the place smashed to pieces and torn apart as they investigate the carnage they soon hear a loud roar of something giant an angry bellowing from within a nearby cave <laughs> yeah you know it's funny i'm um i'm i'm being there's a publisher out there i'm doing some work for and they're doing they're doing a modern uh mm -hmm. sort of very much like what you're doing sort of thing and they they wanted me to paint this uh story going on right here so <laughs> nice the the giant of kandahar yeah, yeah. that's cool <laughs> and uh yeah so basically these go from like world war one to kind of like more modern like 2000 stuff and that's cool you're able to do that because you did go mm -hmm. generic with your weapons so yeah yeah all, all you would have to do is just like leave out some of the equipment like you know world war one shit is probably not going to have night vision goggles unless it's like a diesel punk setting which you could also easily do so mm -hmm. oh yeah that's uh that's simple modernity i like it i think you uh made something really cool um yeah. You're giving GMs and players a lot to play with, and yeah, it's a good. Uh, you've made a good product where it can overlay over their OSC rulebook or their basic fantasy yeah. rulebook, and so, um, I mean, really, like if you're using basic fantasy, which is free for PDF, and then they get your PDF here, which is what three is it three fifty or yeah three fifty. Um, I think you could probably charge more for it than that, but um, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm the same way when I'm pricing my stuff I'm like but I suck <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I need to get more confidence in myself but yeah yeah uh so basic fantasy is free for the pdf and they get this and you're easily on your way to playing some cool modern fantasy or just straight modern yeah definitely adventures I think if I do the expanded version, I'm actually gonna like look into like making it like officially like OZ compatible, because then just the the writing is a lot easier because you can just just reference OZ like rules. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I don't have to like be as vague about stuff, basically. Yeah, yeah. And OSC is so popular. It is the new, yeah. shiny new, the new thing in the OSR. So. <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Let's take a look at Waste Runners. I'm excited about this. I, I looked through it yeah. a little bit. Uh, so this uses my Cow Punchers rules, which yep. is not OSR. Um, it's my own little D6 dice pool system. Uh, I, I like this. Uh, I, I thought you did something cool with it. Yeah. So, so uh, I actually took a lot of like your writing and just kind of like edited it. So it wasn't as hard to write as you know you would expect. This is like a bunch of copy and pasting because by, you know, we invent the wheel. You already explained the rules. Why would I have to do it in my own, you know, fucking shitty voice? <laughs> Let me zoom in a little bit because it's kind of small. Uh, I like the I like the layout of it all. Did you do this one in Scribus as well? Yeah, oh, this okay. is my first uh, Scribus project. I'm going to have to look and into like, it. Figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to look into Affinity. I think Affinity is going to be yeah. what I use going forward. It just seems yeah. like the in-between. I'll between, probably buy that too. Yeah, like 54 bucks, I think, and you get it. And yeah. Yeah, totally worth it. Um, I kind of like was proud of this little effect I did where like the pictures look like they're taped actually in like a book. Yeah, that's cool. So it's like almost like a homemade survival manual that like some, <laughs> you know, some guy made. <laughs> his prepper prepper book yep yeah so, so you know this all works as waste runners like or uh, as uh cow punches sorry. yeah very simple three core tributes yep. and i think you added some skills too you changed yeah, the I took away some. some skills yeah and changed the name to let me make, make them less like you know uh yeehaw <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, added piloting, which is anything from like driving to like you know. Oh, actually, no, this specifically, yeah. Uh... Because oh, you have a driving skill, I saw already. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh... uh, yeah, this is all the shit that you know you wrote. I don't think I did anything really different with that stuff. Yeah, what I did with cow punchers is it, it might irk some people, but I kind of went milestoney with it because it is much. The way it's the game plays, it's gonna play much more like a narrative game than like a dungeon crawl, you yeah. know. So, I it, it it's all and it's a deadly game at the same time. It's like if you get in a fight, you might be totally screwed. So yeah, I I I give players experience for just like surviving a session. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I did is uh, with co punches, you have like multi attacks, kind of like baked in. Like, you know, this revolver, you can, like, attack, like, three times. And this shotgun, you attack, like, four times. Um, my guns, they all just do, like, a base attack of one. And mm. then I have, like, you know, a separate rule for multi-attacks. Because modern guns are just so more powerful and versatile that, you yeah. know, being able to, like, take, like, a a 50 cal and be able to shoot it, like, five times, it kind of, like, I don't know, doesn't really leave much of a challenge. <laughs> I think the the lever actions is what I gave the most fire rate to. Yeah. Like a lot of the lever actions can fire some of them can fire like seven or eight rounds in a turn. Yep. And um but I but I did have rules for like each successive shot becomes more and more inaccurate as you're shooting. Yeah. So Yeah, that makes sense. I think I might have done that too, I'm not sure. Each additional attack requires uh, a know. perfect roll of six. So you just you just decrease the success range as, as they yeah. keep shooting, which yeah. it, again makes it hard harder to hit. So yeah, for those so they, they, yeah they have to actually roll a six instead of a five and a six. Yeah, so it goes from like a thirty three to I don't know what is one divided by six. I can't do math. I'm stupid. So uh, I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm Dutch. Don't ask me. <laughs> Yeah, because in, in this part, you did have to make some new stuff. Because, like, I, this is kind yeah. of why I, I did Cow Punchers as, like, my first like, big project. Because it was simple. Like, the Western weapons are are simple. Like, there's no full auto yeah, weapons. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, no, there's none of that stuff. So, Well, you could have a Gatling gun, technically, but, yeah. Yeah. It's very niche. <laughs> yeah. You, you could do your, your Django, carry it in a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> Um, I think this stuff is all like the same. I mean, you know, there's some commercial free art here. It looks good though. 
I mean, it fits the what you're trying to do. Yeah. Or you know, the currency is euros because you know it's in Europe. Little uh, little gun porn uh, orgy yep. picture there. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, like you see, uh, I actually did uh, specific models with this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. It, it kind of fits because I don't know. Yeah. It it works in that regard. You're going for a very specific setting, whereas like your other project, you're going for something more generic. General. Yeah. So this is very specific. Like you're in the wastes of Europe, so you know this is the kind of stuff that you can expect to find like in Europe. So that's why I went with a lot of like European models. So you know this uh, Manurin and MR73. That's like you know a European uh, 357 revolver. So you're probably gonna run into that a little bit uh, sooner than like you know your average. Uh, I don't know. Obs you know, obscure American gun, or like a Smith and Wesson or something like that. Or yeah, I mean those are also very common in Europe. But I just wanted to give some European flavor at the end of sure. the day. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, I'm a European actual like legal gun owner, so I kind of have like an idea of like the kind of stuff Available. that you, you know you see in the stores here and stuff. So oh, you do have a Smith and Wesson there. I had a Browning High Power. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's nice and old school. Yeah, and then you got some some sci-fi stuff here. It looks like like a Goss pistol. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, set in the 2040s, and uh, you know, uh, it's ba okay. The the setting is basically uh, uh, the Hadron Collider in Switzerland, like the CERN stuff. Like they did an experiment and it went wrong, and it basically like broke reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So shit, shit's all wonky, and uh, you know um, the, the reason that you're going out there is to find like you know uh, artifacts that are like infused with this wonkiness, I guess, and you sell that to some scientist, and then that scientist figures out like, hey, I can use this to make like this new technology. So that's kind of like where like the most sci-fi stuff comes from. Yeah, I'm watching these people with that uh, collider, and I'm like, have you have none of you watched any sci-fi movies? This is a horrible... yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Raven, uh, says, well, he, 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 uh, Raven says he picked this up. He says, I picked up a copy of this, had to after what I just saw. So, Yeah, thanks. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it. I, I actually want to run this sometime too. So I'd play in it. On the Gilded <laughs> server. Yeah. I want. I got to run Cowpunchers on the Gilded server too. Uh, for oh, this, yeah, definitely. Especially for the scenario book I'm trying to work on too. I also got one uh, old West gun here at least. I got to have a love, love, lever actions are fun. They're just fun yeah. guns. So <laughs> that's uh, the shotgun one, like uh, you know, in T two, in Terminator two. Mm. Yeah, you got. Uh, yeah, your rifles, like the Irma M twenty two. That's kind of like the twenty two version of the M one carabine, and it's like really popular here in, in Europe. Like you come across that all the time in the gun stores. Mm. So that's why I included that. Good varmint gun. Yep. I see HK is still still not for pores in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10,000, <000, laughs> uh, I mean. <laughs> it's it's still a, saw... it's still a flex even in 2040 apocalypse. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw one for sale once like, you know, for civilians and it was like 17 and a half thousand euros or some shit. Yeah. They're not quite that expensive here in the states, but they're still like you're rich. Yeah. If if you have an HK, you're you're rich. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They've got your different brands of uh, 50 cals, also very European. Mm. Uh, let's see, assault rifles. You know, we've got your Russian fare, because, you know, it's it's based on stalkers, so you've got to have, like, some, you know, some Eastern European stuff. Yeah, I like, uh, I like AK-12s. I really want one. I have no real need yeah. for one, but I want one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a VSS. Uh, yep. I just watched uh, spare. I just I just watched Brandon Herrera's video not too long ago. Oh yeah. Of his of his uh, VSS he made. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this homebrew one. Yeah, yeah I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I've got the VSS and then the Honey Badger is basically like the Western equivalent. The G twenty two. No three hundred blackout. Blackout. Yep. Uh, yeah, do you know the G11, like that old school, like that really square, like the yeah. <laughs> like that I 80s, like a kind of experimental gun. So this is basically like a, a near future, like uh, oh, we you know we uh, we we made it. 
Oh, I also noticed I fucked up the price here. Apparently, it's only eleven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be buying that one. I'm assuming yeah, that's supposed to be eleven hundred or or eleven thousand. Yeah, eleven thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> FN scar. I'd love to have a scar, but again, not practical for yeah. me. And nineteen eighteen, cool. Yeah, so people like when they're looking at stat block series, you should probably explain stat blocks for how they work in cow punchers for like weapons and stuff like that. So there's a cost damage. Mm -hmm. Uh Victor has added penetration rating because he has armor. My cow punchers yeah. does not have armor because cowboys didn't wear armor, so it didn't it's not a necessary thing. Yeah. Uh you have a range and uh shots per turn and slots. So I made a system where uh, items like like most rifles take up three slots. A pistol takes up like one, um, and the slots are equal to your vigor score. So that's the number yeah. of slots you have. And then you can obviously increase it by getting a backpack and pouches and all kinds of stuff. So all vehicle in this one or vehicle or and in cow punchers a horse. I have saddlebags and stuff like that. So same idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, you got Molotov cocktail, uh, pipe bomb. It's funny because your your version is longer than mine. Cow punches is only like twenty four pages with a scenario, and yours is uh thirty four. <laughs> Without a scenario, with that. <laughs> <laughs> you like your gear though, which is cool. Yeah. Like you, you really you like to to make that stuff, and that's that's something yeah. that like I I get burnt out on pretty quick. Yeah, I do too, but I just muscle through. <laughs> uh, Raven says I have scars. They're not all they're cracked up to be. The, <laughs> the, the which kind of scars? <laughs> like, yeah. like scars on your body or the FN scar? Because scars on your body make me sad, but FN scars would make me happy. <laughs> yeah. So again, I've got like different ammo types here: uh, armor piercing and hollow points. Oh uh, yeah, you got your backpacks. Like, you know, yep. PDA. You need a Geiger counter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's cool. Tactical vest, which is you know does the same as a backpack, but you you know, it's like an Alice vest basically. Flashlights. Plate carriers. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go into the armor. MREs. That's actually a good idea for like that setting as as to like what that because you know like in D and D it's just like a day's of a day of dry rations like in the modern one it it would be yeah. an MRE <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then yeah, you've got the penetration rating here. So explain how, how it works, because I don't have armor in cow punchers. And so Um, let me find the chapter where I actually do that, because I, I can't remember just from looking at the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see, where do I where do I explain that stuff? Uh I'm sure I do somewhere. I mean Is it in the tax maybe? I uh, Armor goes hand in hand with penetration rating of weapons. The table below indicates the bonus die the character wearing a particular. Okay, yeah. So you went. I think we discussed this. Yeah, like yeah. armor. Armor would give you a bonus to the reaction roll to being shot at for like avoiding yeah. avoiding damage. Or in this in cow punchers, it's avoiding damage because it's just a straight finesse save essentially. Roll roll yeah. a finesse check. If you succeed, you're not getting shot. If you if you don't succeed, you are getting shot. Whereas I guess you could you could narrate this as like the, the the bullet hits but doesn't do anything. So yeah, so basically, say the weapon has a penetration rating of zero, so it's like you know a shitty twenty two pistol, and the dude you're fighting is wearing like you know exo armor, like power armor. They have yeah. like a plus six to their finesse safe against that, you know, because you're probably not gonna get through that shit. <laughs> But then if they have a penetration rating of six, which is, you know, like basically like a 50 cal, you don't really get any bonuses to it. From, it's from just the armor. What, yeah. what you have is what you have. Yeah. Cool. That's an interesting way of doing it. I, okay. 
Because see, I'm I'm no. looking at turning cowpunchers rules into like sword and sorcery, and I have like 45 pages written of that. And the way armor works, I've been kind of going back and forth in my head. So I might steal your idea. <laughs> yeah, well, you already said when I first showed you, it's like this, you could easily use this for like a fantasy setting as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to do that though. Like, just I'm just gonna steal your yeah. idea, Vic. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, you know. I think that's cool. <laughs> uh, likely arrows. That means you're out. doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Likely arrows heading out. Thanks for watching, man. Uh, yeah, you, latest. Catch you on the server. Are there no vehicles? So cover while inside vehicles. Uh, I think it's basically just damage soak. Hmm. That's the easiest solution. That's what I do with cover in Cow Punchers. Yeah. It's just damage soak. Yeah. It's basically just cover, but, you know, it drives with flies. <laughs> Skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it works in a pinch. I like your description. <laughs> <laughs> and, then you, and then you got some uh, info on kind of the, the setting a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, players, they kind of need that. Yeah. I probably could have given a lot more information on Wild West stuff. I'm kind of going that route for my adventure book that I'm trying to do for mm -hmm. it that has some optional rules, but I probably could have done more explanation of, of setting expectations and whatnot. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's what the supplement is for. Yeah. I wanted to challenge myself, though, to see, like, could I write a game in like 19, 20 pages? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, apparently you did. So. I did. I did. Yeah, apparently. You can see uh, kind of like the size of. Uh... So, you know, it fucks up most of Europe, fucking messes up half of my country over here. <laughs> Actually, let's test your uh, geographical knowledge, you fucking yank. Where is the Netherlands, do you think? Oh man, I'm gonna just come out and say, man, I have no freaking clue. <laughs> this, is, this is the Netherlands. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it fucks up half of my country and it actually fucks up where I live. Like, I live in this little leg over here, like right here about. So it... I'm, I'm, I'm fucked in this. <laughs> where did you get this, uh, like, area of effect? Was this, um, like, something you researched? Like, if something went wrong with this thing, this is where it would screw everything up? Uh,. No, I just I just wanted to screw up most of Europe, so I just made up an made oh, up okay. an area of effect, and I was like, "Yeah, this looks good." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like it's basically most of like Central and Western Europe, a little bit of Eastern Europe over here, mm -hmm. a little bit of like uh, Italy. I uh, think this is like Malta and stuff over here somewhere. A little bit of Spain, but you know, pretty much most of France. A big chunk of Germany, like Germany. This is this big. Think fucker over here. Uh, Luxembourg is messed up. This is Belgium. I think they get tiny, like a tiny, like little, uh, little bit of the coast. <laughs> yeah, like over here, like a tiny sliver of Britain. <laughs> yeah, they've got all the different environment environmental hazards over here, like stuff you can expect to run into. Kind of reminds me of like, the Genesis a little bit too. Just the uh, the idea of it, the game. Uh, what's what's that again? The Genesis is uh, it's a little further in the future. It's an asteroid that like takes out much of Europe and like it's just like this wasteland. Africa, oh. Africa, like becomes super technologically advanced because they're relatively unaffected by it all. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happens to the United States. It's not really mentioned, but it's like a new. They call it Primal Punk in that game. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, Six More Vodkas, I think, is going out of business, so you can't really... I, I think you can get the PDFs for free still, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, that sucks. The game, I, I, have, I think it was originally written in German or something, mm. and they translated it to English, and the English translation, which is the one I have, it's, like, so hard to read. So... Oh. <laughs> So yeah, I guess I didn't do a good job. There's some <laughs> translation issues, I think. It probably the yeah. game probably runs better in German, but in English it's just like uh I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Well well Germans do that for some reason. They just write everything in their own language and fuck everyone else. Like 
you know, I'm, I might be Dutch, but I'll write in English. I mean, take an audience. <laughs> like, Man. imagine if I released this shit in Dutch, nobody would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Gravitational anomalies. Oh, here we go. Cool. Monsters. <laughs> yeah. That have been Animals created. Animals so... Or steers. So you took some of mine, yeah, and it added some of I yours. Mean, you know. Well, you know, you, you want to have deer. Like you're gonna want. Yeah. To, that could be a survival situation where characters are hunting for yep. stuff and need venison, need food. So. I I really I kind of see um it's a I I see this as more of a survival game than yeah like spaghetti uh, western simulator like what I made you know. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, you get the mutants, lost soul, overgrown spider. Night hunt, cool. Yeah, you know, standard uh, mutant cannibal things. Essentially zombies. <laughs> yep. I like these ones, the scrap behemoths. Yeah, that seems nasty. He's got a big vigor score there. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you read the description, it's basically uh, like a techno virus that takes like uh, shells of like cars and like helicopters and like attaches like legs to them. <laughs> so it's like the shell of like a rusty like hindy helicopter with spider legs attached to them, like <laughs> running after you. <laughs> Terror tortoise, fungal ghoul. <laughs> Yeah, you got some cool stuff in here. Cockatrice. Yeah. Other runners. Yeah, you're probably going to have a uh, competition in yep. in uh, loot and PC competition. I always like yep. that in old school games too when you're like scrolling or, you know, going through the dungeon and you meet another party, adventuring party. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, like we could team up with these guys, but then we've got to share the loot. Should like yeah, pretty much. <laughs> should we fight these guys? Because they're like competition, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's criminals, so you know you're the average bandit basically. Cultists, cool. Uh, veteran runners, so the, you know the more that actually managed to survive for a while. Soldiers, settlers, special forces, cool. Yep. And then. Uh... Yeah, you know, all the stuff that, so pretty much all your rules for, like, what what happens if you run into people, or does initiative work? A couple of uh, optional rules, which I think I took from your uh, little supplement that you were working on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, heroic hit points and all that junk. Cool. Uh, make your own character sheet. MS Paint. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fine. It looks good. Yeah. And then, right. yeah, that's it. But uh, a right. little supplement, I think. Uh, see you later, Negative heads Headspace. I think we're probably ending the stream here soon anyway, so maybe a little yeah. early. Started a little late, but we got through both. I wanted to really highlight what Vic was doing. He's always yeah. on, on the show here. He's uh, the co-host, and um, I wanted to show what he's, he's, he's making, so... Uh, I have links already to all your stuff. I think I have links to your itch, your drive through and your Twitter in the video yeah, description. Cool. So people can go check that out. Um, and the cool thing, like the OSR, but not quite as big, obviously, is that Waste Runners will work with Cow Punchers. So you could probably take some of those weird monsters and add them into a Weird West game if you wanted to. Yeah, th yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah, that would be a quick, dirty hack for that. Because I get the feeling people with me are like, Damn it, John! Why didn't you make it Weird West? It's like I didn't want to. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I hate well, you weird, know. It's not that I hate Weird West, but I didn't want to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what other people are for, right? Yeah. People like me, crazy <laughs> enough to make shit for your game. So, yeah, that'll that'll definitely be my next uh, Cow Punchers uh, project. Is the Weird West one, which I'm gonna call uh, what's the name? Um, Madman Profits and something. You were telling me, I think. Uh, yeah, prophets, prospectors, and madmen. Yes, because yeah. that's like an old phrase. Like you know, there's like three people that that you meet in the desert, and yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Foxshot says, anytime Vic has to share loot, I imagine him staring at the other party with the thing music playing. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, Foxshot is my buddy over there. He's uh, not messing with me. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the uh, you know opportunity to let me highlight my stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Simple modernity is definitely my best seller so far. I think I'm like seventeen sales or something since I last checked. So, I think forty or fifty is uh, copper. Yeah, fifty one I believe is copper. It's said. copper, and I think like a hundred and or hundred and two or something is silver. So yeah, yeah. I hope you get there. And yeah, yeah. Same. Even just copper, like would be sick yeah so everyone go check it out um and uh check out his stuff at gm still says weird west needs regular west to build on for sure oh yeah definitely um for sure I, i'm just a fan of like straight westerns and it's again it's not that i dislike weird west but there's there's already weird west games out there in, in a lot of respects so like if you like my my game and my system and you want to make it weird west and you and I'm flattered that you would like it more than say like uh, mm -hmm. Deadlands or something like that. Um I that's super heartwarming and flattering, but uh I I I love that uh man with no name style yeah. style adventure, you know. Well, well Deadlands is its own setting, which you know, the setting is awesome, but I kind of usually prefer making my own stuff and at least with cow punches it's you know, it's setting neutral, so I can do whatever the hell I want. I don't have to like adhere to uh, um, that land setting, and then uh, they might have mechanics that are actually like you know specific to that setting. Mm -hmm. uh, Raven says Weird West can be homebrewed, or you can incorporate Wretched Country into it. Wretched Country is cool. I I have a copy of that. Yeah. I I maybe I'm a little biased because I helped Miguel with that with the cover and everything. So maybe maybe I'm a little biased in that regard, but. Uh... Yeah, we should get uh, them, uh, Miguel and um, uh, Sylvia, the, his wife's. Yeah, yeah, we should get them on sometime. Yeah, let them I'd, talk about that stuff. I'd love to have them on and talk. I think the problem is that they're in Portugal, and I'm not sure if they're night owls like you over in the yeah. <laughs> in the Netherlands. You know? <laughs> yeah, true. So uh, they're probably. It's probably like. Yeah. What time is it for you right now? Uh, like six in the morning. AM. AM. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. it's probably somewhere close to that for them. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you can always set up a different day. True. Yeah. True. Doesn't always have to be a Monday. Like, uh, could just be like a random. Like, yeah, I'm talking to them now. Yeah, special day. Um, yep. Yeah, I'd love to have them on. They had me on their show a while ago when I had first. Yeah. Yeah, done I saw that. Cow punchers, and they're very generous, awesome people. So it's really creative, cool stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I like I said, you say I work fast, but then I watch you work, and I'm like, I gotta work faster. <laughs> <laughs> well you know uh, very little sleep and no life and lots of energy drinks you can get shit done yeah yeah i'm always tired all the time it's part and parcel yeah. of having a two-year-old but um, yeah true but yeah check out Vic's stuff uh give give him some love help him get uh, mo uh simple modernity to 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 help him get it to adamantium let's do that let's just yeah let's go <laughs> yeah for, that'd be cool let's go for broke <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> um yeah uh until next time guys we'll we'll talk to you guys later look forward to next week i don't know what we're going to talk about maybe we'll have someone else on i'm going to try and get back yep, to we'll doing see. doing art but i have to figure out like with this streaming setup like how to do it properly because it's it's different but yeah yeah definitely you know, you full week so or or i could just use stream stream yard for when i want to do art on the stream that worked it worked well for that yeah. so uh definitely well, we'll close it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out, again, Vic's stuff, and uh, catch you guys next week. Yeah, latest, guys. <laughs>